Good evening, you're looking live at the White House where Vice President Joe Biden says his boss is considering taking executive action to deal with gun violence without waiting for Congress. Tonight, I will reiterate once again exactly where I stand on guns. I'm in favor of a nationwide ban on military-style semi-automatic assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. I want to close the absurd gun show loopholes that require private dealers from now on to run background checks on buyers at gun shows. And I'd like to see President Obama increase federal funding for mental health treatment for all Americans who need it. I think that would go a long way towards at least trying to stop the deadly toll of gun violence in America. But tonight, I'm talking to a man who doesn't agree. Things got pretty heated the last time he was here. Take a listen. It seems to me that you're morally obtuse. You seem to prefer being a victim to being able to prevail over the criminal element. And I, I don't know why you want to be the criminal's friend. What a ridiculous argument. Larry Pratt is the executive director of Gun Owners of America. I've invited him back in the hope we can have a more meaningful discussion tonight about guns in America. Mr. Pratt, welcome back to you. And thank you for having me. Why did you agree to come back? Well, um, I thought maybe we could help you sell some more newspapers. More newspapers? Increase your viewership. Right, we're a television channel. You're aware of that? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, of course. If you were at the meeting with Vice President Biden tomorrow with the NRA and Walmart and others, what would you be saying? That the discussion uh, has not been uh, going anywhere that we can tell in a productive way. Uh, we're not talking about making it so people can defend themselves precisely in these gun-free zones that have been the scene of all of our mass murders for the last 20 years. Uh, hopefully, uh, at some point, we're going to come to the realization that repeating the same policy year after year, getting the same deadly results, is only going to get us the same deadly results the next time. Right. So your solution, if you were there in that meeting, would be to arm every school, every church, every hospital, uh, everywhere that the members of the public could be. You certainly would uh, want to encourage people who are qualified to carry a concealed firearm to be able to do so in a school zone. Right now, that is illegal in all but a couple of our states and some of our institutions of higher learning. But uh, by and large, it's uh, prohibited. Uh, that needs to stop because we have been using those as magnets where all of our mass murders have been occurring in these gun-free zones. It just seems uh, that we uh, have a fixation with the idea that no defense is a good defense, and that's not a good idea. Here's my issue with this uh, gun-free zone claim that you keep making, you're not the only one that makes it, is that, unless I'm wrong, these mass shooters pretty well know they're gonna die. I mean, they go to kill a lot of people, and then they know at some stage they're gonna die because all mass shooters, pretty much all of them, get killed. And frequently, uh, they kill themselves. Right. So why on earth would the fact that it's a gun-free zone make any difference to them? Uh, they're looking for, uh, it would seem, in their sick minds, uh, to see if they can outdo the Virginia Tech slaughter or uh, some other thing that might be in their perverted minds. Uh, so why should we give them a neon sign that says, well, see if you can do better than the last guy over here? Robbie, you know there were armed security people at Virginia Tech. You know that there was an armed sheriff at Columbine. And he you know, fled. Well, and you know that at Fort Hood, one of the most heavily guarded military bases in the world, 13 people were killed and 29 wounded. So and you, it was a gun-free zone. There were no guns right. on base unless you were an MP. Right, but it remains one of the most heavily guarded military bases in the world. My, my a lot point, of good that did. Right. My point to you, Mr. Pratt, is that even where you have a mass of well-trained people and a mass of firearms, you can still have massacres. You'd accept that? Um, especially if you're telling the potential victim, you can't be armed. You have to wait for the cavalry to get here 5, 10, or in the case of Newtown, 20 minutes later. I find that unconscionable. Do you know how many mass shootings have been in America in the last 30 years? And by mass shootings, I mean the FBI definition of four people or more in the same place. I don't have a number uh, for the last um, uh, 30 years. We've uh, looked at that at Gun Owners of America for the last 20 years. I, 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 can tell you, I can tell you the answer is 62. Do you know of those 62 mass shootings, how many times a civilian has actually taken out the shooter? 
um, it is probably not that many because we make it so hard for people to be able to defend themselves. Do you want? Do you want well, I mean, hang on. I mean, you got three. But there are well, examples. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. You have you have in America. 300 million guns in circulation. You wouldn't contest that. 99 laws have been passed since 2009 to make it easier for Americans to own guns, to carry them in public, harder for the government to track. Um, what I'm seeing here is a picture of ever more relaxed gun laws and a spike in mass shootings. And in fact, six of the 12 worst ever mass shootings in America have come in the last five years. And the reason for citing no, the last 30... Well, it is, it is true. Um, mm. it, I'm not, these are facts. These aren't things which are open to conjecture. Well, you can laugh. You always laugh when we talk about this. I don't find it remotely funny. Um, but the point is that there's been an escalation in the number of mass shootings in the last five or six years and also the scale of them. The Aurora movie theatre shooting was the single worst shooting in American history in terms of people hit by one shooter. And the Sandy Hook shooting was the single worst school shooting in the history of America. And yet every time these things happen, Mr. Pratt, you come out and you're very vocal and you're proud of what you say and you basically say the same thing. If everybody had been armed, somebody would have killed the shooter and prevented the massacres. You know, we're, we're, uh, if, you, if we would be talking the way you want to talk, we're not going to talk about making it easy for people to defend themselves. We're not going to talk about the times when mass shootings did not become mass murders because there was somebody on the scene who was able to shoot back. Right, but again, nor but again, are again, we, again, nor again, let me jump in. talking let me jump about in, the federal government this is why, this sponsoring is, right, a program of putting guns in the hands Mr. of the Mexican cartel, resulting in the death of now over 400 Mexicans and counting, Mr. Pratt, and let's we're say, not let's even say, talking about Mr. Eric Pratt, Holder Mr. and Pratt. his Justice Department and their culpability in complicity to commit mass murder. Okay, let's stay on the point I was trying to make, which um, is, Mr. <laughs> Pratt, Mr. Pratt, let me stay on the point I was trying to make, that in the last 30 years there have been 62 mass shootings, not a single one has ever been thwarted by a civilian, despite America being a heavily armed Country. That's My a point, circular argument, sir, because it's if it's thwarted, it's it doesn't fact. rise to the level of being a mass shooting. Mm. It gets stopped in the, it gets nipped in the bud. So, of course, we're not going to have those in those grisly statistics because a good guy with a gun was able to get there before the, the body count mounted. General McChrystal, uh, one of America's finest modern generals, uh, was on Anderson Cooper earlier. He's been doing the rounds with a, a, a new a project that he has, a book. And he said he doesn't want his family anywhere near the assault weapons that I am particularly exercised about. We have a clip here from Morning Joe to show you why he feels so strongly. I spent a career carrying uh, typically either an M16 and then later an M4 carbine. And an M4 carbine fires a 223 caliber round, which is 5.56 millimeter, at about 3,000 feet per second. When it hits a human body, the effects are devastating. It's designed to do that. And that's what our soldiers ought to carry. I personally don't think there's any need for that kind of weaponry on the streets and particularly in, around the schools in America. Why, why, why do you know more about the impact and capability of an assault weapon than General McChrystal? While the general was busy defending the country, much of the time outside of the country, Understandably, he may not have noticed the Korean merchants who used an AR-15, not one, but many AR-15 rifles with large magazines to defend themselves when against was that, mobs Mr. Pratt? during the Los Angeles when, riots. When was that? That was some, uh, what, 20 years ago. Uh, the, those men... Did and, you know how long ago that was, were, Mr. Pratt? Were able. Let me finish my point, if you would. Well, it was 19, able to, you made this point last time. It was 1992. It was 20 themselves. years ago. There's never been anything like it before or after. The argument oh, uh, you're indeed, trying to after the Katrina, argument you're it was trying these to kinds propagate. of firearms the that were being used by the people propagate. around New Orleans to be able to defend themselves. And after hurricanes in Florida, it was people using these kinds of firearms that were able to defend themselves. When you have uh, one woman in a closet who is only able to deter an assailant who's found her and her kids with five shots that hit the guy's head mm -hmm. and he still walks out of the house she was out of bullets in her six shot revolver mm -hmm. if there had been two assailants i don't think she would have done so well the last four mass shootings in the last five months have all involved the ar-15 style military style assault rifle 
They're widely available, as you know, even in Connecticut, which has supposedly quite tough gun control laws. Uh, why do you feel so strongly that civilians, despite what we just heard from a leading general, should still be able to have access to these killing machines? Well, because the general and his troops are not going to be there to protect the average American, the military, nor the police after the social order implodes, after a hurricane, after an earthquake, during riots. And his experience, and I very much appreciate his service to the country and the military, but he's not uh, dealing with what civilians have to put up with in the vacuum of somebody being around to protect them. We're on our own. And I don't want to do it with a two-shot Derringer or even that poor Georgia woman's six-shot revolver. I want a real gun to be able to protect myself and my family because it's not just likely to be one uh, roving bad guy. It's likely to be a gang of people. And this is not Marquis de Queensberry. This is the real world where we're going to need sufficient firepower to protect ourselves. Oh, I think, I think you have sufficient firepower, Mr. Pratt, because, of course, you have 300 million guns in circulation. That is why. And I want to read these statistics to you carefully, because I heard you this morning talking to uh, Alex Jones, who I had on early in the week, and we'll play some more from him a bit later, and you were talking about these figures from Britain and how apparently the gun control in Britain has been a, a fiasco and crime has been through the roof, etc., etc. So I actually dug out the official figures. These are the homicide figures from guns in England and Wales by comparison to the United States of America going back to 2003. I'm going to read these quickly to you. Uh, because I think they make a point on their own. 2003, gun murders in, in England and Wales, 68. In America, 11,920. In 2004, 73, England and Wales. In America, 11,624. In 2005, 50, in England and Wales. In America, 12,352. And so it goes on about the same levels in both uh, countries. Now, now, let's, now uh... no, no, let me finish. Here's my point. Every time I hear you say that there is a safer country where you have more guns, my brain takes me back to these figures. Because in Britain, we brought in a, as you know, a handgun and assault weapon ban after what happened at Dunblane, where a very similar number of school children were murdered with guns. This is the result of what happens when you take a responsible action to respond to an, a massacre beyond any kind of comprehension. Why do you still persist in trying to persuade Americans that the complete opposite is true? Well, first of all, according to your investiture of the constabulary, the data that you're using for the murder rate in England is a sham. There's a monumental misreporting of what constitutes murder. Uh, if three people are murdered, it's likely to be counted as one event. What an absolute, and, absolute lie. That is well, an absolute... that's what no, you say you see, when Mr. you Pratt, don't know what you're no, talking Mr. about. Pratt, but let me I tell was you, just it looking doesn't at take that very long. 2000 Mr. Report, Pratt, it doesn't take very long to count 50 data. gun murders. These are your own How government's data. How long do you think data. it takes Go tell the, the police constabulary or a pathologist that they're to count lying. 50 you bodies a year? them for an apology. Why don't you? So you are telling me that 50 murders a year, 59... These are simply invented statistics. And, in fact, the figures in Britain for gun murders are many more times that, yeah? That's, what That's exactly what your own constabulary is saying. Actually, I don't know that you included in your litany the Cumbria murders that occurred uh, well after the gun ban in which 12 people were murdered. Let's I admit, multiply I have to this. look up where Cumbria is, but it happens to be on the west coast of England. Yeah, don't be patronizing. Uh, 50 murders in 2005, 41 in 2009, 39 in 2011. You... No, you had 970. I don't know what you're talking this about. This is complete nonsense, Mr. Pratt. <laughs> you're, you're from another planet, Mr. Morgan. So you are stating, and that's why you're Mr. having Pratt, trouble living you are in America. Stating, you are telling me on CNN that we had how many gun murders last year? 970, and you have a violent crime rate that is the fourth highest of any country Mr. in Pratt, the world. You have just propagated an absolute lie. That well, then go tell the editors. 2011, there were go, 39 go tell, gun murders tell, in England and Wales. Go tell the editors of the Telegraph, who published just that information two days after our last interview. Mr. Pratt, there were 39 gun murders in England and Wales in 2011. It's You're a fact. whistling past the graveyard. No, what you're doing is deliberately lying 
deliberately twisting it so that Americans watching this who may be tempted to buy in to your ludicrous fear game rush out tomorrow and buy more weapons and more ammunition. Because you know what? More guns, less gun crime, less gun murders. It is a fallacy. It is based on lies. You've just propagated another lie. You've just said that a figure of 39, the official figures from the British Home Office, 39 gun murders in 2011 in England and Wales, you have added a naught to that and then trebled it. It's outrageous. I'm sure you're going to feel is so much better. You'll feel so much better being defenseless until you need a gun. And then it'll be a little too late to buy your insurance policy. Let's take a break, Mr. Pratt. Let's come back and talk more about this. Uh, try and stick, if you can, to facts and not lies. That would be very helpful for the tenor of this debate. Back now with Larry Pratt, Executive Director of Gun Owners of America. Let's play a clip from my interview with your friend Alex Jones from Monday Night Show. And I'm here to tell you, 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. Doesn't matter how many lemmings you get out there on the street begging for them to have their guns taken. We will not relinquish them. Do you understand? That's why you're going to fail and the establishment knows no matter how much propaganda, the republic will rise again when you attempt to take our guns. What did you make of Mr. Jones's uh, performance on that interview? Well, it seemed that uh, you had improved your demeanor quite a bit from my own experience with you, and I congratulate you for maintaining it during that whole interview. He maintains that the main reason that Americans need to be heavily armed is because of the threat of a tyrannical regime coming from his own American government, your government, uh, against the people. Do you believe that? That's what our founders believed, and that's what's important because that's why we have a Second Amendment. The Second Amendment, as all of our Bill of Rights, all of our Ten Amendments, are designed to limit what the federal government can do. And that includes the Second Amendment, ensuring the right of the people to keep and bear arms. Right, but as you know, the Second Amendment specifically applies to a well-regulated militia. Um, you're going to lose that argument. Increasingly, the courts are agreeing that individuals were to own their own military rifles so that if they were called to duty, they would have that to bring with them. That was the Militia Act of 1796, which required all able-bodied men to own a military rifle so that they would have it at the ready where they called up. How many guns do you want in America, Mr. Pratt? That's not for me to decide. That's for individual Americans to decide. Do you think every American should have an AR-15? Uh, every American should be able to get an AR-15. I understand there are plenty of people that are not going to want that. There are probably people that would rather have a superior firearm. Uh, that's their choice. What are you going to do if President Obama wins his battle and brings in new uh, stricter gun control legislation? Well, he's not going to do it by legislative, in my opinion. What I'm concerned about, and what I've been concerned about since even well before the elections, is having seen the president rule by executive order where he has no authority in other areas, I can see that he would just go ahead, and, and the vice president has even hinted at an executive order that would accomplish some or all of their uh, gun control agenda. That, I think, uh, changes the game and throws into question the legitimacy of the federal government. And I would advise Mr. Obama to consider what happened to George III when he was doing similar things against the American colonists. You're likening President Obama to George III. Well, he ha President Obama hasn't banned the importation of ball and powder yet, which George III did. Uh, but that was one of the major contributory elements to our war for independence. And George III, as you probably know, uh, was so stressed by the loss of his uh, uh, famous uh, favorite colony that he ended his days in a nut house. And I wouldn't wish that on anybody. When I talk to you, Mr. Pratt, I always look for some sense of humanity from you in this debate, that you could react to something like the Sandy Hook massacre in the way that I did and many other people did. And I never see it from you. All I see is a very uh, determined attempt to make sure the only outcome is that the gun manufacturers sell more guns and sell more ammunition, as we saw in December, record gun sales, record ammunition sales.
Sir, I would ask you, where is the humanity in telling people they must be disarmed, they must be victims, they must just sit there patiently and wait their turn for a bullet? Is that humanity? Where's the humanity in doing nothing after these massacres? The humanity was being able to do nothing during the massacre. That was the lack of humanity, and that's what we're trying to rectify. And you know what? Uh, I know this will come as more lies from Larry Pratt, but it's entirely possible that the House of Representatives will approve a bill by uh, Representative Steve Stockman to do away with the gun-free school zones. And you'd be happy with that if, if every school suddenly had people running around with guns, right? You're a good guesser. Yes, sir. Where are they going to put them? Well, when people carry a concealed firearm, one doesn't exactly know for sure. Uh, and the element of surprise remains with the person carrying concealed, which means that somebody contemplating doing something horrible doesn't know which person or persons might be able to arrest him, uh, to, to stop him. And that's why our jurisdictions that have uh, easy access to concealed carry firearms enjoy lower murder rates than, say, the gun control mecca of Chicago, which does better than one murder a day. Well, let me end uh, just by asking you one more question, because I think people watching will be curious. You know, you're a very experienced man in your field. You've run your operation for a long time. People take you seriously. You're a leading member of the gun rights lobby, and people believe what you say. So I'm going to give you one more chance before we finish to say again how many gun murders you believed were in England and Wales in 2011? Um, more important than the number of murders, and, and it doesn't matter how a murder is committed. So I'm not going to uh, really care about well, can you repeat how many the number? Can guns. you repeat the number of gun murders that you said earlier? The data we have seen was 970, but okay. well, that then, pales then, Mr. into Mr. insignificance Mr. compared to your violent crime Mr. rate overall. Mr. The Pratt. rapes, the muggings, Mr. the Pratt. beatings. Mr. Pratt, stop being sensational. Everyone watching can now get on the internet, they can go on to Google, they can go to the Home Office sites from uh, England and Wales, and they can check that figure for themselves. And when they see the accurate figure of gun murders in my country was 39 in 2011, and they see that the figure in their country was over 11,000. And they remember will, that your own know. investigature of constabula mm. constabulary said your data okay. are sham. As I say, uh, they can check it for themselves and they can make their own minds up about your credibility. Mr. Pratt, check out you. the sham data, my friend. That's great. Okay, you're no friend of mine.